I'm here to present a new eulogy of our former president, uh, Daniel Toroti Charop Mui. Was born on September 2nd, 1924, in Kuriangwa, in such a location of Baringo District. He was named after his father, Kimoi Arab Chebi, a clan herdsman whose ancestors had migrated from the Nile Valley and settled in the Tugen Hills in the 19th century to avoid intermittent uh, skirmishes with the Maasai. Moi was the fifth child of Carbon, Chebi's first wife. He was named Troitich, which means uh, welcome home, we welcome home the cattle. His father died when he was four years old, leaving his elder brother Tuitoek to play the guardian role. It was Tuitoek who influenced him to go to school. And he started his schooling in 1934 at the African Inland Mission School at Kabartonjo. On October 20th, 1936, he was baptized Daniel and transferred to African Inland Mission at Kapsabet and later to Government African School, also at Kapsabet. In 45, he was selected to join Alliance High School, but was denied admission by the colonial administration, and instead he was enrolled at a teacher training college. On completion of his course, he was posted as a teacher at Cabernet, where he studied privately and passed his London matriculation examinations. He was promoted to the rank of P2 in 1949 after attending a brief course at Kagumo College. He was later transferred to Tambach Government African School as a teacher trainer. Moy married Lena Bomet in 1950, and their union was blessed with eight children, three daughters, and five sons. And I'm one of those five sons. In, in the same year, he attended a course at the Jean School, Kabete, where the currently Kenya Institute of Administration is, and was subsequently posted to Government African School, Cabernet, where he taught teachers up to 1955, when he joined politics. His entry into politics followed a meeting with a group of freedom fighters under the command of Brigadier Daniel Njuguna, who visited him in June 1955. And in October 1955, the Electoral College selected Moe from a list of eight nominated candidates to fill a vacancy left by Joseph Oletameno, who had resigned from the unofficial benches of the Legislative Council, LegCo. And as member of the LegCo, he moved a motion demanding that African teachers be allowed to form their own association. This led to the formation and registration of the Kenyan National Union of Teachers in 1957. He worked alongside other leaders like Eliud Mathu, Ronald Ngala, and Masinde Muliro in agitating for the release of Jomo Kenyatta from prison and greater African representation in the LegCo. In 1959, Moy led a group of leaders who visited Jomo Kenyatta in detention in Lodwa. He was also among the Kenyan delegation under the auspices of Kadu, who attended the London Constitutional Talks of June 1960. In 61, Moy was appointed parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Education and later served in the Ministries of Education and Local Government. He served as Minister for Local Government, A37, as all conference chairman of Kadu, Moy saw the intricacy of politics and opted for a united a nationalistic approach leading to the dissolution of Kadu in November 64. In January 1967, at 43 years of age, Jomo Kenyatta appointed him his, his vice president following the resignation of Mr. Joseph Murumbi. Moy became president following the death of Mze Jomo Kenyatta on 22nd August 1978. He served as chairman of the Organization of African Unity for two consecutive terms in 81 and 82. 
He was also involved in mediations between various conflicting sides in Uganda, in Congo, in Somalia, in Chad, Sudan, Mozambique, Eritrea slash Ethiopia, Rwanda, and Burundi, among others. He served as chairman of PTA between 1989 and 1990, chairman of COMESA between 1999 and 2000, and the East African Cooperation between 1996 and 2002. After a 24-year presidency, Moi handed over the reins of power to Moi Kibaki in a peaceful transition that followed the National Rainbow Coalition's victory over Kanu in the December 2002 general elections. The major test in his presidential tenure was in August 82, when a detachment of Air Force soldiers attempted to overthrow his government. And since retirement, Moi largely resided in his Kabarak home in Akuru County. Despite his international stature, Mze Moi never lost touch with the ordinary people. The hallmark of his leadership was a personal commitment to uplifting the poor, the disadvantaged, and the old from the clutches of poverty, ignorance, and disease. His personal philosophy and belief in God defined his view and purpose in life. Fare thee well, Mze. Thank you very much.